Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. The new debut self-titled Onda Tropica LP. These guys are a Colombian band, sort of, a lot of transplants and, and people from all around the world in this band actually. And they're kind of a cumbia super group that came together under some very rare and, and interesting circumstances, being able to have access to one of the biggest and, and most legendary Columbia recording studios of all time, Discos Fuentes. It's an analog recording studio and you get a really kind of crisp, old school sound out of just the tape that they lay these songs on. There are dozens of musicians on this thing, actually over 40, and to kind of guide all of them are two producers. And together they all kind of have the passionate goal of trying to update and diversify this classic style of, of Latin music by experimenting with new sounds and styles. Now, I wouldn't say at this point these guys are resurrecting cumbia or anything like that. It's not like cumbia just up and died one day. A lot like other forms of, of popular and, and roots music, it kind of got incorporated into other flavors of, of the day. You know, there's cumbia rock out there, there's techno cumbia, there are sounds and instruments from cumbia being incorporated into music in Latin America that showcases sounds from dance hall as well as hip hop. So it's not like Onda Tropica is like the last cumbia group standing or anything like that or the only one who has ever experimented or taken the sound into some of the directions that they are on this album. Still, there's something just really, really unique and, and jaw-dropping and special about the characteristics of this album, the analog recording studio, the really great musicianship and, and writing and arranging, the mix of old school seasoned vets who brought cumbia into the sound that it is today, and new musicians who may have a passion for cumbia, play cumbia themselves, but also experiment with the genres that this album kind of finds itself weaving in and out of on this LP. That kind of unpredictable mixed bag of, of musical styles that Onda Tropica takes on here and the really bright attitude that this album brings, I mean, it just makes a phenomenal album. That bright attitude to me is this album's greatest asset. To me, that attitude is, is something that transcends musical style and culture. No matter where you're from, you can sense that there's just this really just, just bright, upbeat, just smile-inducing aura around this music. Simply put, it's a fun album. No brainer. Now, Cumbia, in short, is, is just, it's very tropical music. It's festive. Throughout these tracks, you're gonna hear hand drums, congas of different shapes and sizes, upright bass, piano, accordion as well, and horns, horns, horns. The percussion section in these tracks just piles on polyrhythm after polyrhythm with, with drum kits, cowbell, guira. There are other traditional instruments on here too, like the mio, which is a, a little wooden flute type instrument. And for kind of added effect on these tracks, guitar shows up as well, synthesizers, clarinet, bagpipes, marimba. And, 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 and there's even a song on here that features an 82 year old man rapping for the first time in his life. Though these guys are great musicians, they write some seriously great songs and, and perform them really well. They do get kind of weird with their studio time sometimes and just let kind of whatever whim hits them just take them. There is a really strong Latin music tradition on this album. Every musician on this thing just celebrates cumbia with, with so much passion. But what really makes this album so fun to listen to and just so new and invigorating is the sense of adventure. The fact that producers Will Holland and, and Mario Galeno sort of made sure to direct every track into a different area, sort of have a different recipe to it. And the fact that you have so many musicians involved has just made this album so versatile. It's really a feat of, of, of patience and focus that Will and Mario were able to guide this album away from the chaotic mess that it could have been. And do it for the almost two hours of material this album has if you incorporate the bonus tracks. This album opens up with the track Tiene Sabor, 
Tiene Sazon. The track has a really strong vintage Latin music flavor. It, to me, is, is maybe the more classic and, and less messed with song on the map with this album. And I love the horns on this track that kick in right toward the beginning. And the chorus melody on this thing is killer. It's a long one too. I love a long developed melody. But the lead singer on the track is great too, and I don't know why. Like when I was first listening to this song, <laughs> when I first popped this album in, not really knowing what to expect, I just like, you know, I was like <gasps> And it's not even like a sad song. It's it was just it was weird. It's just a really great track. And what sounds even more fantastic about the song is that these guys are totally just playing these tracks, performing them with minimal overdubs in the studio. You really get the sense that you, you know you're hearing them play together. You don't get that a lot these days, especially with bands this size, where you can kind of punch in everything afterwards and whatever. It creates an atmosphere where it sounds like they're having a lot of fun playing, and it's hard to you know not have fun listening. It just really makes me want to get up and dance my gringo ass off. Now the next track on here, which was one of the first singles to drop from this LP, put it on my love list, Punkero Sonidero, is an accordion-filled groove with a lot of spice, and it kind of throws a curveball into the equation by laying on some psychedelic guitar that you would think wouldn't work, but actually sounds great. There's some strange soloing on the track, too. There's a lot of great tracks that just, like I say, have that sense of adventure, just kind of throw that curveball and just sound kind of refreshing, like the track Ska Fuentes that sees these guys taking their Latin music instrumentation and, and chord progressions and applying them in a ska context. I mean, you get the upbeat in there as well, and Will and Mario actually add some dub effects into the song too, as the horn melody on the hook kind of, you know, starts melting and just, yeah. <laughs> it's a great part of the song. It's, it's cool stuff. The track Libya sees the band incorporating a, a Middle Eastern melody into a song. Oh, the track Gaita Tropica not only sees them incorporating that instrument, but also some really experimental, weird psychedelic synthesizers as well. Dos Luchesitas has the band playing with some very watery electric piano. It's a very mournful track. The closing track on here actually features the band playing with, with more of a swing style of jazz music, and there's a song on here that's kind of like got an ambient drone in the background from a from an accordion and then somebody's beatboxing. It's it's kind of weird. And the song Suena actually kind of features a an accordion horns, a hip hop beat and a female MC who is is actually really good. I mean, you know, she's rapping in Spanish, but still a lot of charisma. It may be kind of gimmicky to jump from genre to genre on almost every track, especially when on the third track here you have a Black Sabbath cover where you kind of have them really hamming it up with some kind of goofy vocals. But Onda Tropica really backs it up with some great freaking musicianship songwriting and and production because after I gave this thing a handful of listens and the gimmick kind of wore off what kept me coming back after that is the fact that the the songs were good the songs were well played I think this release is going to hook in a lot of people who are fans of Latin music people who have been listening to Latin music for a long time and, and, and who are maybe a little nostalgic for a time when a lot of the older musicians on this album were you know kind of having their heydays but this is by no means a dusty, old, fun cumbia record. You know, it's a new album. It feels like a new album. It feels fresh. And that's why I think it could appeal to a younger crowd as well. And an American crowd too, because I'm sure some people are going to come across this and just, you know, get grabbed by the novelty of, of vintage Latin music if it's not really something that you listen to on a regular basis. However, if you know good playing and, you know, you know good production when you hear it, like I said, that's what's going to keep you coming back. And maybe even turn you into a serious Latin music fan. So, you know, if, if this is outside of your comfort zone, in my opinion, that's all the more reason to try it. And that's it. I mean, as far as negatives on this album go for me, the Black Sabbath cover does border on just being ridiculous. The Rap Maya track is, is kind of weird as well, but still fun, still funny. The track Rap Maya is, is also kind of weird, but still funny. And the track Donde Suena El Bombo is really one of the least sharp tracks on this entire album for me. The vocal melody is just 
all over the place and doesn't really have a clear direction, making it just a little more dull than than some of the songs on here. I would have liked to have heard maybe some some more soloing on this album. You know, there is a strong improvisational element to some of these songs, but you know, I just would have loved to have heard maybe just some more fiery horn solos that really would have made this album even more mind-blowing for me than it already is. I mean, let's face it, this album, in my opinion, is just mind-blowing as is right now. I mean, it's just stellar. It's just really good. Um, I'm feeling a, a light to decent nine on this thing. What did you think of it? If you've given it a listen, did you love it, hate it, why, and what should I review next? Anthony, uh, Anthony Fantano, Onda Tropica, forever.